Hi, everybody. So this is an introduction to the mole. Uh, you may have heard that word before because it has lots of meanings in English. A mole can be a blemish on the skin. It can be a little kind of ugly animal, <laughs> my opinion, I guess. It can be a spy. But in chemistry, we're going to be working with the mole as a unit. Okay, so a mole is like a dozen. We really want you to kind of connect those two as far as how they work. If I say you have three dozen eggs, how many eggs do you have? Well, you know that a dozen items is 12 items. So a dozen eggs is 12 eggs. So three times 12 is 36. That's simple, easy math because 12 is a nice, easy number to work with. The mole is a number as well. Dozen is a number, it's 12. A mole is a number, it's not 12, okay? It is much more complicated than 12. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. Okay, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. Now this, this is an enormous number, okay? Um, we, don't, we don't have a ton of time to talk about how big that is, but I'm gonna give you a couple of analogies. Hopefully all of you have held a hockey puck at some point in your lives. If you had a mole of hockey pucks, one mole of hockey pucks, that would mean you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hockey pucks, okay? That would be the same mass as the moon. So the entire moon would weigh the same as this many hockey pucks. Okay, really, really huge. Um, if we had a mole of pennies, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pennies. And we divided that evenly among every man, woman, and child on earth. We would have enough money, each of us would have enough money to spend a million dollars every hour of every day and still have over half of it unspent at death. So, and that's pennies, um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pennies, right? So it's, it's an enormous number. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about why it is that number next time when we go over 10.1. But it doesn't make sense to use this number with things that are big. Okay, a penny is something that we can see, we can touch, we can handle. A hockey puck, same thing, okay? Even, uh, even a grain of rice, a mole of rice grains is just, it's, it's unfathomably large, okay? Even a mole of sand grains, it's just, we can't imagine that, okay? A mole of jelly beans would fill a fishbowl the size of the planet Earth, okay? So we're talking about a huge, huge, huge number. It only makes sense to use this number with things that are very, very, very small, okay? Very, very small. And those things are things that we've been talking about in our class in chemistry. We've talked about atoms. We've talked about molecules. We've talked about formula units. Protons, neutrons, electrons, we could probably use mole for, but we're gonna be working with atoms, molecules, and formula units. Remember, an atom is the simplest form of an element, it's just the simplest representation particle of an element, okay? A molecule is when you take atoms and they bond covalently. So you can have two atoms bonded covalently like in a diatomic element, okay? Or you can have lots of atoms bonded covalently to make something complex like a sugar molecule or DNA, okay? And then formula units are gonna be for ionic compounds when you have atoms that are giving and taking electrons and they're forming ionic bonds. Okay, so the things, again, is gonna be either atoms, molecules, or formula units. So if you need to, what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and get your Plainsman periodic table out. And I'm going to kind of show you a piece of the periodic table that we're gonna be using in chapter 10, and we're gonna start using it right now. So pause it if you need to, and go ahead and get that out. And flip it to the back side and you're gonna find what we call our molar map. It looks like this, okay, molar map. And we're gonna really, in chapter 10, we're gonna focus on 
just the maroon section of this molar map. So I'm just going to zoom in to the maroon section here. See if I can scroll over. Okay. And for right now, we're going to focus on these two little islands in our map. Okay, so they're connected here, which means we can convert from one to the other. And then all of these lines are telling you you convert, can convert from one thing to the other at the end of each line. And then the tool that you need to do that conversion is written next to the line. Okay, now if we're going from moles to particles, we're gonna be using Avogadro's number. Avogadro, Amadeo Avogadro, is the person who came up with this number. And again, we'll talk about how he did that in 10.1. But we need you to know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, okay? PC particles, okay? I just abbreviated that. So Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and that is equal to one mole. Okay, we are never going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles equals one mole. Okay, so it's always just one mole. Okay, now particles, again, this can be lots of different things, but we're going to stick to these three that we, I mentioned a little bit before. And I would highly recommend writing this stuff on your periodic table. If you don't want to write on your fancy planes and periodic table, then get your notes packet out and flip to the inside of the back cover and write these things there, okay? But one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Atoms, we abbreviate AT. Molecules, we abbreviate MC. Okay, because ML is milliliters and MO is molybdenum and M is meters and MOL is actually the abbreviation for moles. So MC is gonna be the abbreviation for molecules. We gotta make it complicated. And then formula units, again, for ionic compounds, we get to abbreviate those FU, okay? So we're gonna be working with some conversions here and we're gonna be converting between particles and moles. Okay, and I'm gonna do two examples of that just to show you how we're gonna work with this number right here. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna do a couple problems back here, okay? So if I say you have 4.78 moles of water, okay, 4.78 moles of water, and I wanna know how many molecules of water that is okay remember mc is molecules okay okay so we're going to set this up as a conversion this is my conversion factor one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things and in this case my things are molecules of water okay one mole of water has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water all right so always start with what you're given 4.78 moles of H2O. Put your factory label grid, okay? Factory labeling, use it. You will lose credit if you don't use it, okay? And then you're going to use this here to convert from moles to molecules, okay? So what I need to ask myself, I always need to ask myself, where do I want to put one mole? Well, I have moles here. I want moles to cancel, so they need to be on the bottom over here. So one mole of H2O is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. Moles cancel out and I'm left with molecules. Punching this into your calculator, again, if you have not figured out scientific notation on your calculator, this is gonna be a really cruddy unit if you don't figure that out. So please figure it out, okay? On my calculators, remember, it's this EXP button at the bottom. So we would type in, 6.02, like that, 6.02, and then we hit EXP. We do not type times or 10, just EXP, and then we type in the exponent, 2, 3. Okay, so that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, I'm multiplying that by 4.78, and I get an answer that looks like this. Notice that there, there is an exponent in your answer. We are never going to end up with 
um, 2.87 molecules, okay? It's always gonna be an immense number of molecules, okay? So 2.88, really, because I'd have to round that, 2.88 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And we re need to write that way as well, times 10 to the 24th. If you're using a calculator that ends up with an E24 at the end, then write times 10 to the 24th. Don't write E24, okay? Show us that you know what that means. All right, so that would be how we would do that problem. I'm gonna change it just a little bit and show you another example. If we have 3.78 times 10 to the 24th atoms of neon, how many moles do we have? How many moles of neon, okay? So again, start with what you're given in the problem, 3.78 times 10 to the 24th atoms of neon. Set up your factor label grid, and then ask yourself, where do I want to put one mole? Well, I'm not trying to cancel moles, I'm trying to cancel atoms. So I need to put one mole, literally the words one mole, or the number on the word, one mole of neon in this case. And then I put Avogadro's number on the bottom. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. Okay, now I've got atoms here, atoms here, we're canceling. And then we need to punch that into the calculator. Tell you what, try pausing the video, punch this into the calculator that you have, and see if you can get the right answer. I will tell you what the right answer is after I get it. So if you need to pause the video, go for it. But I really want you to try it yourself. Okay, so for three sig figs, you should get 6.28 moles of neon. 6.28 moles of neon. If you are wondering about sig figs, Avogadro's number only has three sig figs, the way that we're using it here, okay? It is not an exact value. This number also only has three sig figs because when you're using scientific notation, you ignore the times 10 piece, and this is what tells you how many sig figs you have. All right, so those are simple molar conversions. Remember, a mole is like a dozen. A dozen is 12 things. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. But it's, it's a word that means a number. Don't make it more complicated than that. The number's complicated, but don't make the, the concept more complicated than that, okay? All right, so the next page, you're gonna try some problems and we will see you in class.